Hi, it's William. If you're watching this, you're probably one of my students that has to do some data analysis in r, &R Studio for one of your courses. Um, the purpose of this video is to get you up and running inside of r, &R Studio as fast as possible so you can start working on the homework and stop worrying about getting things set up. So let's fire up uh, an internet browser. Oh, there I am, William Knapp. Okay, let's do a Google search for R. There we go. Our very first link is R. If we click that and then click the link under download, we'll be given a whole bunch of mirrors. Mirrors are just different um, servers across the world that have the same information on them. And it's good to pick a mirror that's near you, so hopefully you'll get a faster download speed. I live in Oregon, so I'm going to select this one here. Then I'll choose download R from Windows, install R for the first time, and then finally download R3.22. Okay, let's save that file. I'm on a pretty quick internet connection, so this should be done fairly quickly. All right, it's done. Let's install this sucker. All right, let's accept all of the defaults. So we're just going to accept the defaults here and let it do its thing. Woo! Okay, so it's installing, and this is a pretty quick install. RStudio will take just a little bit more time, but R is fairly efficient during the install process. R is going to be our workhorse. It's going to do all the heavy lifting for us, but our studio is going to make working with R so much more pleasant. What I mean in a little bit. All right, so R is finished. Now let's Google R Studio. All right, here it is. We want to download it. I'm on Windows, so let's look for a Windows release. There we go, Windows. Save the file. I'm going to take a little while to download this puppy. Then we're going to install it. All right. OK, so we're installing. Again, we're going to select all the defaults. And this will take just a little bit longer. Um, the reason I like using RStudio in conjunction with R is RStudio will automatically show us what variables we have access to. It will auto-complete um, things that we're typing in to make sure that we don't make silly punctuation or spelling errors that will slow us down and create needless um, frustration. All right, so that's finished too. So let's fire RStudio up. So I'm opening it right now should pop up in a second. There it goes and it's going to think for a moment. And this is exactly what you should see when you open up RStudio for the very first time. This is the console. This is where R is basically lives inside of RStudio. And you can do simple things like math and have access to one of the most powerful um, calculators in the world. But we're not going to use it for simple stuff like that. We're going to do more complex analyses. Okay, like what? Well, um, if you're doing this for my class, you probably have a file that I want you to um, work with and knit. And an example file is oh so cleverly named example.rmd. RMD stands for R Markdown. Um, RMD files, when they're open, they're just plain text. There's really no formatting. It, it looks like there's formatting here. Um, you see this is blue, this is green, but it's actually just text. Our studio understands some things. So it understands that this pound sign means to make something a title. So it um, colors it differently. So that way it's easy to tell what things are titles and what things are comments. Like this is a comment with this weird little symbol there at the beginning and at the end. Here we have just some, some explanations of what's going on. And here we have a code chunk. These tick, tick, tick marks with an R inside of brackets with some R code followed by tick, tick, tick. You can insert a chunk anywhere just by going up to chunks and clicking insert chunks or insert chunk. Um, a lot of the times I'll have a chunk for you um, and when I have that for you basically all you need to do is edit what's inside the chunk. You'll notice that I accidentally deleted those last three ticks so I better put them back. Seriously, the chunk it has to start with these first three, the R in the brackets and it needs to end with these bottom three ticks. Um, the tick symbol is the symbol that should be directly to the left of the one on your regular keyboard. Okay. So we have an R Markdown document open inside of R. Let's try to knit it because that's what I want you to do with my example documents. Knit them. 
Let's see. All right. So it's working, working, working. Oh, no. Rendering R Markdown documents requires updates. This is fine. You just installed R in R Studio, so it needs some additional packages and libraries. So yes, let's install those. After it gets finished done installing all of these packages, then it will try to knit the document. It's not going to work right now because we have to do some other work too. This process, depending on the um, speed of your computer and also the speed of your internet connection, could take uh, you know a less than a minute or it could take quite a while, especially if you have a slow internet connection. All right, it's done. And now look, we have this thing saying R Markdown. So it's trying to knit R Markdown. And oh, we have an error, line 129. So let's go and look at line 129. Well, here's line 129. And it says library and dplyr. And dplyr is a particular library. Um, it's basically a package that has a whole bunch of functions that we might want to use to help us uh, reorganize or analyze our data. Um, but we can't use any libraries until we have them installed. So what we need to do is install this library. Also notice we have another library here. So let's install some libraries. So let's go back to the console and type install packages. Install. Oh my goodness, look at that. I started typing it and it guessed what I would probably want to do and it highlighted one of the options for me. If I wanted the other option, I could use the down arrow. I can use the up and down arrows to choose from whatever one I want and then just hit enter. And this is beautiful because it ensures that the spelling is correct and that I didn't make some silly error that will make you have a mistake. Um, so it also provides an open and in parenthesis. If I type a double quote, notice that it also provides the closing double quote and I want to install the dplyr package. Now I want to show you something what happens if I um, maybe spelled it incorrectly. Oh, I couldn't find the function install package so let's fix that. Rather than going and typing install packages again um, there's another way that we could do this and that's simply by pressing the up arrow by pressing the up and down arrow we can navigate through our previous commands and then edit them as we need to do similar things this should work this time so the deployer package will take a, a little bit to um, install so I want to take a look at some other things while it's busy working so I already mentioned the code chunk right so we have this code that's inside this chunk with these ticks now what we're doing in this very first piece of code is we are trying to read in a data set and this is a politics CSV file CSV stands for comma separated values basically it's just a data set and what we're saying is we want to read in this data set and assign all of the data herein into a variable called polls so this little arrow hyphen thing this means that we're going to assign what's ever whoops what's ever over here to a variable over here okay so we have finished installing dplyr let's install the other packages that we're going to need i'm going to press the up arrow in addition to dplyr we're going to want the tidyr or the tidier library this should be fairly quick to install in addition to the tidier library we are probably going to want the gplots library. This one should also not take too long. And finally, we are going to install ggplot2. That will be the last library that we're going to need. OK. So what I want to do right now is show you how you can run commands that are inside the RMD file. So notice how I explain sort of what I'm doing and then inside of a code chunk I present the actual code. Sometimes it's useful to run the code directly so we can do this by copying and pasting so control C copies, control V paste and then hit enter. Uh oh it couldn't open the connection. Hmm no such file or directory. Well 
the file exists and I know it exists because in the same directory or folder that has example.rmd that I loaded, it also has politics.csv. But R doesn't know this, so we need to tell R what directory it should use. And we need to tell it to use this directory throughout our current session or throughout the current time that we're working with this. So we're going to go up to session, then set working directory, and then to source file location, that example.rmd, that's source. It's the source of our commands, it's the source of everything that we're doing right here. So to source file location. Now I can recopy and paste, but I want to show you a better way to do this. You can just put your cursor in anywhere into a line that you want to run and press control enter and that will do the same thing it's like copying and pasting and running all at the same time now notice it returns back to this little arrow which means that R is ready to accept more commands also notice that up here in the global environment it says that we have this variable called polls that has 132 observations of 7 va we'll, we'll see what that va is in just a second I want to show you another couple ways that you can run commands in addition to pressing control Control enter some people like clicking buttons more so you can put your cursor inside of the line you want to run and then click run that will do exactly the same thing um, you can also highlight an entire uh, piece of code and click run and that will work too one thing I should mention let's say you have two lines that you want to run if I just put my line in there and hit run, it's only going to run the first line. So if I want to run a whole bunch of lines at once, I should highlight all of the lines at once and then click run. That will run both of those. Everything worked just fine. So I said I wanted to take a look at what this polls was. So if we take a look at the very next thing after I read in the data set, I say let's take a look at the data and I use this command. So let's control enter that and this is going to let us look at the structure. STR stands for structure and it says that we have a data frame of 132 observations of seven variables so that VAW is variables and it shows us what these seven variables are subject party test time etc and it shows us what types of um, variables these variables are so some variables are factor variables others are integer variables others are numeric variables and for the purposes of this demonstration that's not important the important thing is to use structure a lot by using structure, we can um, see what our data is structured as, and we can see how it changes. I'm going to reread in the data again, and I'm going to use structure to look at the data as it originally appeared. Notice how subject was just an integer variable. However, after we ran this little bit of code right here, now, whoops subject is a factor variable so I recommend after you do something to check how your data have changed by using structure this is really useful okay so let's try knitting the HTML now that we have um, installed the packages that we need if this is successful everything should work and we should see a nice beautiful HTML page notice that by putting that pound sign we have this nice title up here uh, it has my explanation of what I'm doing it shows what I've done inside of a code block by blocking it off for some blocks that have output like the structure block did it also shows what the output is when I grade your assignments what I'm going to do is take your RMD files and I'm going to try to knit them then I will look at the commands that you used I will look at the output this output could be figures this output Output could be tables this output could be analyses so if you can't knit your file that means I won't be able to knit it either and you will lose points so what I highly recommend you do is work with the individual lines run lines tweak lines see what happens as you change things um, and then when you've got something that you think is working make that what's actually in your RMD and then before you submit anything knit the HTML and make sure that it knits without any errors watch this if I change something as simple as getting rid of that poll or the S from polls I'm gonna get an error object poll not found Uh oh so let's fix that let's see what happens if I spell it with a capital P Oops, it doesn't knit. Object polls isn't found. 
R studio and R are anal. You've got to spell things exactly the same way. Each beginning parenthesis has to have an end parenthesis. Each beginning quote needs to have an end quote. Each beginning bracket should have a corresponding end bracket. If you don't have these things, the program won't run as expected and you will get errors. So please be careful. All right, so at this point, you should be able to get R and R Studio set up. You should be able to install the libraries that you need. Um, once you install the libraries, you will never need to do that again. That said, when you are working with the libraries, you will need to indicate which libraries you're working with in order to have access to those functions. But once you've installed the libraries, you won't need to reinstall them again unless you install R studio again on a brand new system or do a complete uninstallation all right so hopefully you've got enough to go good luck and uh, happy analysis